Hello, everyone. Thank you to be here in this Houston view. We are here in Indio, California, because the LA Galaxy is here uh, because of the preseason of the MLS. And now we are with Eric Sabaleta. Eric, how's going on? Thank you to receive us. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's good to be here. Uh, first of all, how is the father life? The uh, father life is the best. Yes, it's been uh, my son is five months old now, so yeah. I am understanding and getting the hang of it a little bit but uh it's been the best thing in my life so far for sure really yes. uh the sleep and the sleep is good the sleep is difficult for sure uh, <laughs> thankful for my wife because now i've been here two weeks and she is alone with the baby but uh we're doing the best we can for sure okay eric how is the preseason with the LA galaxy going right now yeah, it's been pretty good. You know, this is a beautiful setup, as you can see behind me. Um, there are much worse places to be. Um, and so, yeah, I think the team is moving in the right direction. Um, we are getting new players in uh, that we did not have last year. I think we are getting healthier, which I think is very important after a difficult year last year. And uh, we're getting sharp uh, as we're only 10, 10 days out or so from, from a game against Miami. Eric, what are your goals in this season of or the goals that you have with the galaxy yeah i want to be available which means being healthy um i felt like last year i had too many moments of difficult injuries that did not allow me to be available for the team when the team needed me um so i think first and foremost availability um and then consistency as much as as many opportunities as i get whether that be one or whether that be 34, I want to be the best version of myself uh, to help the team win as possible. This is a club where uh, expectations are winning every week. And that's something that I enjoy, something that I want to be a part of. And uh, I want to help the team, whether that's on the field, off the field, in the locker room, in any way possible, I want to help the team achieve their goals. Your contract ends at the final this season. Do you want to renew with the Galaxy for the next year? I've loved my time here with the Galaxy. Um, I want to help them get back to where they belong, which is in the playoffs. Um, and so I'm taking things day by day at the moment where, um, you know, I want to help them get to where they are. And I want to walk out of this club one day, whether it's at the end of this year, at the end of next year, or in five years, however long it may be, saying I helped this club succeed um, with the experience I already have. And so... Um, I've loved my time here. I hope it continues much longer, but in football, you never know. And so I will give everything I have for as long as I uh, have the pleasure of wearing this, this jersey. Eric, if we talk about the national team, we have so many questions. Yes. I'm going to try to give the priority of each one. At this time, you receive uh, a call from David Doniga the new uh, coach of national team? No. You don't receive? No. Diogo Gama calls you. You, you told uh, when Hugo leaves, then Ruben de la Barrera uh, takes the, the position. Yes. That you don't receive a call from Ruben. Yes. But uh, from Diogo, uh, you receive one call. Correct. After Ruben's goes. Yes. You receive one call from Diogo Gama? I have not spoken to Diogo. I... Um... He tried to reach out to me recently um, because he was going to be in L.A. Maybe we can sit down and talk in person. Unfortunately, I am here, not in L.A., as you can see. So we have not had a chance to speak. Um, but uh, he reached out to me to have coffee. There are so many questions that the Salvadorian fans have. But there is only one, after all, that wants to know, that is, if you're going to come back. To the national team what can you tell to these fans the truth of the matter is i don't know um i had a child as you know and i said at the time last year when i last spoke about this towards the end of last season that with the child it's very difficult to go away and like i said to you this is 10 days two weeks here and it's difficult on my wife to go away for that long um with a newborn um but also at the same time, I think the national team is in a bit of a transition period. And for me, it's very important for young players to get experience if 
we are trying to play and plan for six, eight, ten years from now. Unfortunately, in in sport, you can only play for so long. I have played for twelve years. I I don't see me playing in eight years, and so, um, you know, obviously as a competitor, you want to be there for the team to help them win in every moment, but. Uh, also, I think it's important for the development of the country and the players in the country to get games too. And so between fatherhood, who's the coach, what's the culture, who are the players that are going, what are the goals of the team, I need more answers before um, a decision on that is made. So for now, I take it one day by day, one camp by camp, uh, but also trying to keep my body in the best physical condition possible so that whenever a choice is made, uh, I can be at my best. You are not close or do you want to ask some questions that because you want the answers that you to make your decision? Well, since I have not returned to the national team, there has been two coaches. That's not stability. To win at the highest level of the national teams, you need stability. Right now, there is no stability within the team. The team has changed four or five times since I left. It's a whole new team every time. There's no stability there. The, the coach is changed. Um, so it, my understanding was that when we came into this World Cup cycle, we would have stability already and a team who has played together on multiple occasions and had a chance to go after this World Cup qualifying in the highest level. And I understand that we didn't achieve a lot of results under Hugo. And so, okay, the decision was made that the coach had to go. But with the coach going, that means everything had to change. And I'm not sure that was the best way to go about it. Since I've left, other players have left as well. Some have returned, some have come back that weren't there before. And so ultimately, I want the country to be as successful as possible. I want the team to be as successful as possible. Uh, but it starts from the top and trickles down to the players. And once there's some stability within the top, I think that there's a chance to, to achieve results and um, to be successful. But I am looking and watching from afar to see how things turn out, what the coach is like, what the culture is like over there and how is my body at the time that the, the, the games come. And so I'm not ready to say I'm for sure stepping away from the national team, but I'm also not ready to say um, I'm available to be there for the next camp because uh, at the moment there's too many questions than answers um, between my personal life and, and the team. You told me that, for example, you want that the young players start to, to have these international matches because they will want to play like eight, 10 years. Yep. And you don't saw or you don't see your, yourself to play eight or 10 years. Yeah. But you see playing more than 2026? Longer than 2026? Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I need to have a good year of health for sure. If I don't have a good year of health, no, I don't see myself playing past 2026. But if I can have a good year of health, then. You never know. Football is short. I feel like it was yesterday that I was a 19, 20 year old kid and I started my first professional game. And now I blink and I'm 31, will be 32 this year. I've played 12 years in MLS, hundreds of games, and the situation is different. And so I have learned enough to say that you cannot take things Uh, too far in advance and say, I will feel this way in three years because I know three years ago I felt a lot different than I do today. You grow up, you mature, and your body changes. And so I would love to play football for 30 more years, but unfortunately that's not possible. And so I would love to say yes, but I can't say yes for sure. There are some people that say that the Salvadorian players they were not born in our country, and I say our country because it's your country, doesn't feel the color, doesn't feel the jersey, doesn't feel El Salvador. What can you tell to that people? They don't, how do they know? How, it's impossible to say that for me. You don't know how I feel. When you watch me play for the national team, you saw I care just as much as the next player. I have passion for the country. I have passion to win. 
I have passion for the fans who buy a ticket or watch on TV. I have blood of El Salvador in, that pulses through my body. That is not something you can take away from me. And it's a culture that I'm proud to represent. I kiss the badge because I care about the, the country. I care about the, the federation. I care about uh, the happiness that winning and football bring to the country. And so anybody can say whatever they want. I think that proof is in actions. And I've shown every time I step on the field wearing that jersey that uh, I am just as much Salvadorian as the next. You, you say, for example, that they don't know what you feel about El Salvador. I remember what, what picture of you, National Empton against USA, first game of the octagonal. You almost cry when you hear the, the National Empton? Yeah, for sure. That was one of the more beautiful moments I've ever had in football and in my career. That uh, passion that the fans have for, for the song of their country. Um, My father was in the stands for the first time in 40, 50 years in the cut back in his own home country. The pride that he had, the pride that I had to represent this beautiful country, to represent my father, represent my family is emotional. And so I felt very grateful to be a part of a special atmosphere and a special game. Before against Canada, is one of the worst moments that you have with the national team? Uh, why? Because that topic that uh, doesn't want to pay the awards for the that you win against Honduras, yeah. uh, Tamaka Senarin uh, talks in one program of, of El Gráfico that uh, when I think that was Seren, Bonilla, uh, Tamacas, Larin that reunited with yeah. uh, Hugo Carrillo. Yeah. Carrillo tells I'm not gonna uh, pay. Yes. And I understand. And then they go to you. Uh, specifically, Boldang and you, and say they're going to pay the awards, and you two say, so we are going to play. Yeah. Is that true? No, it's not true. We were a team. The decision was made not by Roldan and myself. The decision was made by, by no, no, but everybody. I, I, I don't, no, I don't, I think that I can explain. Yeah. When Tamaka Senari talked about this, yeah. say that you two support the team yes. and say we yes. are not going to play. Yes. That, for example, you, They, they say that he support us. Yes. And he also say they don't need the money. Yes. They support us because that was not good. Yeah. And you bought, and, and I think Tamakas told that you and Rodan both a ticket fly. Yes. Came back and Roberto Dominguez go to the. Uh, yes, this is all true. This is all very true. Dominguez took Rodan and I think we were the only three players to leave the, the camp. Uh, because we need to, to show an example that you cannot treat us players like this. And ultimately, yes, the, this is not about the money. Um, ultimately, the reason that I and Roldan showed up to go to the national team was not for money. Um, and it was about respect. And when you are a man and you look somebody in the eye and you tell them, uh, I will pay you for something, And then you tell them, no, I won't anymore. You no longer have respect. And I want the culture of that locker room, of that team, to be uh, that they feel respected. And I think there were too many occasions before I was there that they were disrespected. And I wanted to that show one, them that, that they one. could be respected. You said there was two or three times that that was not respected. Yes. Another one? Another one of disrespect? Yes. Well, after the game, we don't have water and the Federation. You think somebody turned the water off? I don't know. There were very many moments where, you know, the money came late or the fields weren't taken care of or whatever it may be. But look, it is what it is. You know, I, as I don't care if you do your best and you try your best to provide whatever you have, even if it's not the most conditions, that's no problem for me. But when you say to somebody, hey, I will give you Uh, one dollar tomorrow after you finish training and then you say the next day hey just kidding I don't have one dollar there's no respect there and there was a version of that that happened against Canada and obviously we made it very clear that we won't accept those kind of uh, circumstances and I felt very proud to be a part of a group who stuck together they showed that that was a group that cared about each other and uh, we were strong in that moment when you answer 
there are so many things that I start to, to, to resolve and I have more questions. At that moment, the group was together. Yes. You, you say in a few seconds. In the last games against Guatemala and Martinica that we, we lost, the group was still unit? Yes. Yes, I think so. I think um, I think we didn't play our best, first and foremost. Football is about results. We did not achieve results. But also we had a lot of difficult circumstances. Travel to Asia, the time difference is 12 hours. You travel 15 hours or something like this to go play a game. I, we were in a difficult moment, but we all suffered together. There were options for some players to go on a flight uh, that was better and some players to go on a worse flight. And we all decided we all go on the same flight, no matter what the flight is. And so, yeah, I felt like we were still together. Uh, of course, we weren't achieving the results that we needed and we did not do as well as we, we should have done in the tournament. But I felt like it was a group of players who were, were still together. Outside of the, of the group with Hugo Perez, it was one, one topic or one phrase that was the players that born in the United States sits in one table and the players that they were born in El Salvador sits yep. in another table. But I saw, for example, that Tamacas Larin calls you Chelo. Yeah. Uh, Tamacas uh, came to, to LA to watch you in a training you received. I saw outside that is a group uh, that is uh, that is healthy. Dominguez was the one that took us to the airport, right? There are plenty of examples of this. Look, I, I play for the Galaxy, and there are lots of different cultures here from Uruguay, Brazil, Spain, Argentina, everywhere. And uh, players tend to sit at the table of the language that they speak because it's easy. It's much more difficult for me. I'm learning Spanish. My Spanish has gotten much better. One day, maybe we can do this interview in Spanish. But for now, I, English is more comfortable. And so what happens is, is you sit at a table that it's more comfortable, not because I'm from El I was born in El Salvador, or I was born in the US, or I was born in Canada. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, it's about what's comfortable in the moment. But we're all close. Tamakas is one of my closest friends from, from El Salvador. And he, for, for a long time, I could barely speak to him in, in Spanish. And now I can speak to him more. But... You, this notion is something that was created by the public, nothing that was real. And I, I never wanted to be treated any differently than Tamakas or Larin or anybody else. And I wanted everybody to be treated the way that they treated me. And so, uh, again, this is a created notion by the, by somebody on the outside. But if you're on the inside, you know that we are, we, we were together and we are still together. How many message do you receive? to your inbox, to your tweet, saying, Sabaleta, please came back. <laughs> not from the players, yeah. so not from the fans. Uh, yeah, I get some. I, I'm not a big social media guy, so I don't um, go on those things as much as maybe the other player. Maybe I'm old in that way. Um, maybe I've learned my lesson in my career in that way. But, of course, the, the support that I had when I first came to the national team is the same as the support I have today. I have tons of love and respect for anybody who, who wants me to be a part of the team because I have also been on a situation where there are fans who don't want you to be a part of a team. And the love that you feel sometimes gives you the confidence to, uh, to be at your best. And so, yes, sure, I still receive some messages from time to time and uh, I wish I could un explain to them that the situation is not so simple. What questions do you have for this project? Well, I would love to hear the vision of it. I think we will, we will keep this broad. I, I don't think it's appropriate for me to ask the questions to you uh, about what I will ask him because I think it's most important that I ask him these questions when I sit to him face to face. But I would like to know first, what is the project? And what is the vision of the project? What are we trying to achieve? I think it, once the project is laid out, maybe it will answer some questions and I can ask some questions from there. But right now, I have not heard much of a project that's been laid out to me in terms of where the direction is going and uh, how I may or may not fit into that puzzle. And so ultimately, I want the team to be as successful as quickly as possible, but with some teams and with some 
groups, it takes longer, and that's okay. And I think it's very difficult for fans to be patient. And I understand. I am also a fan of some teams who I don't want to be patient. I want them to win tomorrow. If I, if I never play another day for El Salvador, it doesn't mean I am uh, removed ties from, from the country and that I won't support and watch and um, hope that they succeed. And so maybe there's a role for me in a different capacity. Maybe it's on the field again. I'm not sure. But I want to hear that we have a plan of achieving success that we in this country deserve. You, we know that you have a good relationship with Alex Roldan. Do you talk? I know that Roldan has to answer yeah, of course. the same question that I asked to you, but have you talked with Roldan with this to come back to the national team? Not too much, to be honest. So in the you. wedding, you start dancing and don't yeah. talking about the national team? No, you know, because um, it's a decision that I make myself and a decision he makes himself. And so we try not to um, impact each other's decision. And I know it's a very difficult thing for him to go through. He has a lot of love and uh, respect for this for, for, for El Salvador and uh, wants to see the team succeed just as much as I do. And so um, I'm sure it's something that he's thinking about. Um, and I'm sure he will answer that question when it's needed. But um, it's not so much as a, a topic for him and I to discuss. Eric, uh, it was an incredible talk here in an incredible place here in, in, in India, California. Uh, I think that uh, there is some questions that I don't remember that I have to ask because there was so many questions. But this is your camera. Uh, and I think all the Salvadoran fans wants to hear you. It doesn't matter your decision, wants to hear you because you win the respect and the love of the Salvadoran fans in every game. Mm. What can you tell to this uh, amazing, I think that we have an amazing we do. Thanks. We do have amazing fans. I think uh, everything I'm saying is from the heart. And um, I, I, I love and miss playing in front of the fans. And, um, you know, it's a special, special country with um, which is something I'll never forget. And so whether or not I play another game in the jersey uh, doesn't take away the special moments we've had together. We are here in Indio, California. Thank you, Eric, for this interview. I hope you uh, that you have a good season in, Thank you. In, in the Galaxy and maybe we see you in the qualifiers. Thank you. Appreciate it.